is this store? Walking the streets of Shibuya is so much fun. Most especially if you love the people watch like me. Everywhere I look, it's a different nationality of humans. Everywhere I look, there's always something different per street. The Lolita Swag. Oh my god, I saw this on a TV show and now I'm here moment. You have to be here in Shibuya. You have to see Hachiko. If not, it's a scene. <laughs> On our way to Shibuya, a Tokyo trip is incomplete if you don't have this in the itinerary. It's one of the most famous and iconic cities in Japan or in the world. Shibuya has been featured in films and TV shows such as Tokyo Drift, Lost in Translation, and Alice in Borderlands. It also is probably one of the busiest cities in Japan as it houses the famous Hachiko statue in the Shibuya Scramble Crossing. The Shibuya Scramble Crossing is said to estimate around 1,000 to 2,500 people walking every two minutes. It sounds a bit scary and overwhelming, but just by standing there and waiting for the green light to walk the intersection is exhilarating. There's music blasting. People on the street seems to have this, I've seen this in movies, I can't believe I'm here emotions. And some of the locals being amazed at tourists who are amazed by this crosswalk. They're like giving me this feel or like conveying a non-verbal, I know, I pass this every day but this is cool right? They're giving me that look or some just giving me the annoyed look. <laughs> it's energetic but you fall silent and just smile and all as you take the energy of the place. The mood there is just different. As animal lovers, we couldn't pass Hachiko. Patron saint of the dogs. You have to be here in Shibuya. You have to see Hachiko. If not, it's a scene. Sorry. For the dog lovers. <laughs> The Hachiko line was so long, so we opted to take a picture from the sides. Walking the streets of Shibuya is so much fun. Most especially if you love the people watch like me. Everywhere I look, it's a different nationality of humans. Everywhere I look, there's always something different per street. And just some enticing music from shops that's calling my attention. See, there's a shooting about to begin. Sad. Wasn't able to spot a celebrity. We went to Shibuya 109, which is a fashion building built since 1979. It's amazing that this building is still trendy and up and running. Usually, malls that I know that have been built from the 70s are not really popular anymore or people would just go to much newer places. But this building is still hip and trendy. From street style to Y2K, and this is where I truly felt the Lolita swag. Everyone look kawaii. Honestly, store personnel style in Japan is on another level. Shout out to the sales lady at Esperanza Shoes. She said that it's been around since 1966. 
and there seems to be a meet and greet happening, but I don't know who is she though. Well, as interesting as the city is the people walking down the street. I might have took notice more of the people instead of my surroundings. I love the people watch and I love everybody's fashion. Anyways, we went on a Sunday so Shibuya was pretty busy and bustling. Probably wouldn't go hungry in Shibuya. Everything is at hand's reach for food. There's just restaurants and food stalls left, right, and center. We tried to check each other in for lunch, but there was a pretty long line, so we ended up at Parkour Mall. Which most malls in Japan has a really nice food court. The food court was also packed, but it was so cold outside. Waiting at night inside is so much better than out in the cold. Chikasi Mencho was really good. It is said that they're pretty organic in terms of selection of their ingredients, plus they make their own noodles. They also have seasonal menus, and their San Francisco outpost or branch is Michelin starred. Parko houses both local and international brands. I enjoyed this mall as the vibe of it is a bit more artsy than Shibuya 109 earlier. It's a mixture of cool shops and art galleries. We just stumbled upon this building and in one of its floors is this store. Probably one of my favorite hidden gems. Also, the music really in Japan stores are on fire. Our next stop is Freak Store. I saw this alley in Stray Kids Yunjin's post and I was like, oh, I went here. This spot also has pretty good shops surrounding it. 
such as ships, Supreme, Kinda, Ragtag, around this alley. We're gonna go back down again this alley as on the other side is our next stop which is Miyashita Park. Man on the right, I missed it, the famous Tower Records. But I guess I wanted to be Mark safe from buying any albums so I didn't go inside. Since we're now more of aware that there are a lot of good stores not just on the first floor of the buildings here in Japan, we tend to check them out more. Such as this bad store, which is found on the second or third floor of this building, which also have a lot of branches in Tokyo. This is giving me Goblin Drama Show vibes. Our next stop is Miyashita Park. It houses several shops, restaurants, and cafes, and also have a massive park on its rooftop. A park. I know, I'm excited. Hence, Miyashita Park is the name of this place. The first stop is trying out the Matcha Tokyo. We already have this in the Philippines, but still wanted to try it here. I recommend getting the profile. It's really good for an afternoon break. The park really is the highlight of this mall. It's massive and also has a great view of Shibuya. I especially got super excited because I saw this on a TV show on Netflix which is called The Age of 30. And it's one of those, oh my god, I saw this on a TV show and now I'm here moment. Since we're very high up, it just felt like being one with the clouds. Well, I mean, that's a bit dramatic, but it's true. They also have chairs near the fence edges, so you can sit and relax and just enjoy the view. Outside of Miyashita Park or below it is Shibuya Yokocho, which has good food selections. For dinner though, our plan was to get back to Roppongi and have Ikinari steak.
And lastly, we ate at the Kunari Steak. It was good, 10 out of 10. One thing though, is that they didn't ask us how we wanted our meat to be cooked. I don't know if they just don't say it and you need to tell them. I just, I didn't because I thought it would be rude or they have their own ways. But either way, it was yummy. Oh, my God.